Welcome to Restaurant Influencers presented by Entrepreneur Media. My name is Sean Walchef, founder of Cali Barbecue and Cali Barbecue Media. In life, in the restaurant business, and in the new creator economy, we learn through lessons and stories. I want to give a special shout out to Toast, our primary technology partner at our barbecue restaurants for believing in this project, believing in the hospitality business, powering the hospitality business to do the things that we do best. Uh, but more importantly, to give us a stage where we can share incredible stories. Uh, for those of you that are watching on entrepreneur.com or watching on YouTube, you can see that in my podcast studio, I have a picture of New York City behind me. Yet the show is produced and published in San Diego, California. Now, why do I have NYC behind me in the background? Well, it's because we love to think big and uh, the city that never sleeps, the city that uh, is near and dear to my heart because of the hospitality that they show and they give off to the entire world. Um, it's something that we want to always think bigger. We want to see what they're doing, what we can learn from the work that they're doing. Today, we have none other than Richie Romero. Uh, Richie, you can find him at Richie Romero one on Instagram. And if you go on to his Instagram, and I highly suggest you follow him, uh, you will find this is a man of influence. This is a man of hospitality. And this is a man who knows how to get shit done. You'll find photos of him with Kevin Hart, with Neil Patrick Harris, with LL Cool J, with Rick Ross. You name it, they're on there. And he's there showing hospitality. Richie, man, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. I actually was going to say, too, I was like, did you uh, fly in for New York for this? <laughs> <laughs> you know no, I-, I would. I would. I can't wait. I can't wait for our for our follow up. Like I would have came to you. <laughs> follow up conversation in one of uh, one of your restaurants or nightclubs. I would be I would be honored to, to do that. But um, can you set the stage for us? First off, we, our favorite random question on the show is where in the world is your favorite stadium, stage or venue? Oh. Uh... In the world, that's a tough one. Yeah, I know. That's why I ask it. I'll, I'll keep it. <laughs> I'll keep it in um, in the United States uh, first to make it easy. Uh, I'm a big music guy. I love going. Uh, you know, concerts and everything is my uh, escape from my world. And I would say the the Red Rock Ample Theater in uh, Denver, Colorado. I, there's nothing else like it. I just think it's a phenomenal, phenomenal uh, place. So, so that's so- that's one I gotta say. So fans and you gotta keep it in New York. It, you know, it's still the Mecca, Madison Square Garden. It's the Mecca, and I'm a diehard Nick fan. That you know, I get my heart broken every day. So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm a San Diego sports fan. I got, I got no. Oh yeah, there. you you understand that? <laughs> got a good. I, I live in misery. Huh? I live. I live in hope that my son and my grandkids eventually one day will will have something to cheer for. I don't know. Padres look good, man. Padres look good. (laughs) We're trying. We're trying our best out here. So let's go to Red Rocks. Um, You know, one of the things that we're trying to do is do things differently. The people that listen to the show, we think they're playing the game within the game. So however you found this content, no matter where you are, welcome to the community. You're trying to level up your business. Um, One of the things we also want to do is figure out how to do events better. So let's pretend that we're at Red Rocks. Let's pretend that we get hospitality professionals to run the best conference where I'm talking about TED Talk keynote speeches about bars, about restaurants, about nightclubs, about how to get shit done, how to build incredible communities. And I'm going to put you on center stage at Red Rocks, except it's going to be all of your peers, all of the best people all over the globe, the people that have built significant business empires. And I'm going to say, who's Richie Romero? Give us two minutes. What's your elevator pitch? Who are you? What do you do? For Red Rock or just in right general? now, you're at you're at Red Rocks. You're in front of all the entire front of everyone. We're talking in front of all the billionaires, all the billionaire hospitality professionals, millionaires, billionaires, all the people that know how to how to move industry. Uh, it's your show now. Who are you and what do you do? Uh, my name is Richard Romero. Uh, pretty much what I do, I I break it down in this way. I'm pretty much we all have been to casinos. I call it the decentralized casino, where <laughs> I like to give someone, I don't care if you're five years old or 75 years old, I want you to give you an experience. And we've all been to casinos and resorts. And when we go there, you know, you have the nightclub, you have the grab and go, you have the restaurant, you have the lobby bar, you have the spa, you have every single different kind of thing. So in New York, especially it's, you know, my home base, it's, um, I'm a born and raised New Yorker. 
And I wanted to give that same experience. We don't have casinos here. We don't have resorts. So I have to do it the deconstructed, decentralized way. So I provide, I like providing any sort of hospitality for anyone. I want to keep the relationship going from the morning till late at night. So I'll give them everything from Zazi's Pizza to Innocent Yassi, my plant-based cafe, uh, to my bar, Hidden Lane, to uh, Temakasi, which is a hand roll experience, to Sushi by Boo, which is you know, amakasi experience, sushi sweet, which is another amakasi experience in a hotel, um, nebula, which is our nightclub, even as, um, you know, a director at Sapphires, you know, a, a gentleman's club. It's just, I want to give and put a smile on and have an imprint on anyone's life from any age. So that's pretty much what I love to do and why I do it. Do you remember when you first fell in love with hospitality? What was your oh shit moment? Oh yeah. Uh, in terms of, I'll tell you what brought me in more or what, when I was in it already. You tell me, you All tell right, so me. I'll tell you how pretty much I started, what made me realize. Um, I never considered myself, like I don't, I'm not a, an artist in any way. I don't have any musical talents. I can't sing. And I pretty much, my creativity is creating these projects and these experiences. That's as much as I could be as creative. And I remember when I was literally 12 years old, I would throw, you know, random parties, house parties, um, ra you know, raves, which I always laugh about raves because, you know, raves illegal. But if you put a corporate sponsor with it and you get some permit, <laughs> it's a festival, which is the it's Coachella. Stuff. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, it's you know what I mean? So I used to do, you know, uh, uh, parties in parks under, you know, under bridges, you name it. We used to do it. And uh, I remember where I, I got a little illegal <laughs> and got a little too creative. Um, my sister, my middle sister was four years older than me. So, you know, I used to lean on our friends. They loved me. I was a little punk wise ass kid, uh, you know, from lower Manhattan and then Queens. And um, they always wanted to help me with my, some of my ideas. So I, used to, I started breaking into McDonald's playgrounds in Queens. And we used to bring kegs of beer uh, for my sister's friends. Uh, they would do security. I'd bring boom box radios and charge a mission. And we would do parties in uh, McDonald's playgrounds illegally. And no way. That's pretty much like, you know, what gave me the hype and everything. It's just, you know, I, I love experiences. And I just think, you know, just going and getting a beer and just going to a bar just wasn't enough. I just love the experiential aspect of it. And this is before even branding. Like, I look at it like I always hate hearing the word, you know, the buzzwords of the day, yep. you know, yep. branding. But when, it, when do we give it? 10 years it's been? 15? How long is the word branding? <laughs> like, it's probably I, 10 years. Yeah. It's, it's a 10, 10 years, years hot I, button. I was doing, you know, I was doing that's, it. That's place, the, ma the magic is branding. Yeah. No. Yeah. And it's, I've been doing it my whole life. So I've been branding without knowing what it's a word. I guess, you know, sure. before sleep, we didn't know what we were doing. We were just laying down and then they just gave it a word <laughs> eventually, you know? But, uh, yeah, pretty much that, that was like pretty much a wow moment, just being able to be like, wow, I could get people together and create and how I go into it in terms of like, what was your first party you've ever been to, even as a kid? If I, mean, I had a for, guess, I mean, that, for, for, for me, I, I, yeah, I mean, it, it was a pizza party, it was a kid's party, but I mean, I grew up the same way, you know, I, I was great at getting alcohol to parties illegally. You know, exactly. I, was, I, I got seven different fake IDs taken, but I was the one hosting parties. I mean, in, in the same way in San Diego, like that was that was my thing. That was how I got into the hospitality. Because I was like, I'm good at this. I'm good at hosting parties. I'm good wait, at wait, getting wait. people together. Look, the great guys. We got a damn movie made after. <laughs> <laughs> We're still waiting for our, for our movie premiere. But yeah, exactly. I know what you're saying. But even like with that, like you look at it, like if you ask anyone, ninety nine point. 9% of people, their first party they ever went to or they ever did was a pizza party. And that was yep. one of the biggest reasons why everyone went into Zazi's Pizza. That was like one of the main things was, you know, pizza's already cool. And I was like, you know, what can I do where it's already cool? And the program aspect, if you go to pizzeria, I know, Sean, you've been to many pizzerias. You go there, you know, basic thing, you get the pizza. You know, most places don't even have a website. If they do have a website, yep. it's usually back by something not, else not mobile like first the pdf first, menu yeah. yep it all exactly sucks. Yep. so when i when i started opening um the zazi's pizzas my whole thing was i wanted a programming aspect to it, what we've been doing our whole lives and you know that's why i do like sneaker drops you know art parties 
you know, just random things where giving that experience, even with pizza, because that was our first party. And I love doing pizza. I do pizza parties at my places. And that's, yep. you know, that's really why I love it. I just love creating given experiences. I mean, if you want proof of concept for Zazu's pizza on, on Richie's IG feed, you can see Jerry Seinfeld eating, eating his, <laughs> enjoying, indulging in Zazu's pizza, which is absolutely <laughs> incredible. So tell me back, so I'm, I'm reading through your bio, I'm doing my due diligence, and it says you, you've been known as king of the velvet ropes, king of the velvet ropes. This is back to the nightclub promoting days. Yeah. Can you bring, can you bring us, can you bring us back to, how, how do you become anointed king? Uh, I don't know. You know, the one thing, at least, at least it wasn't like, you know, like, uh, LeBron James, where he appointed himself. King James. <laughs> Someone else appointed you. I like, you know, it just started with press, you know, page sixes and different things. It just started calling me the king of clubs, you know? So uh, I kind of got stuck with it, you know? When, when did the first, what was the first club that hit that, that kind of put you on the map? Uh, I, when I started, I pretty much started in 1992. I started in the limelight. Um, I was working for uh, Steve Adelman and Steve Lewis I actually went back and forth because, you know, they were both the big bosses on the Peter at the time. And I kind of flip flop, you know, I was with, you know, Adelman for a year, uh, Lewis for a year, I would go back and forth. And I just think, you know, developing going from the limelight stage to, you know, do my own events, uh, I ended up starting a company called Click. Uh, Click Entertainment, uh, which later on, that's a whole other story where uh, we've started on this place called Cheater on Thursdays. And uh, we called it Click Thursdays. And then eventually we started our company called Click, Click Entertainment. And I remember, I don't know if you remember the Jay-Z song. Of course. When he says, you know, at Club Cheat and everything where, you know, he was at our place. And then, you know, late years name, later. Name, name dropped by Jay-Z in the club. Yeah, yeah, then you realize years later, he came out with the song Click. Him and, <laughs> him and Big Sean. And they actually used my logo, man. <laughs> the click years later. I don't use it anymore. You know, I have a tough company, but it's, it's, it's pretty funny. But I think, think I've been doing, you know, New York, Miami, uh, Vegas, LA, and then, you know, branched out later on, you know, when I came in well, with uh, One Oak and Butter Group you know, doing parties in Paris, doing a formula one, doing different things. It just, I kind of just, they started calling me, I think the club King in like 2012 was the honor. It might've been something before that, but page six just started giving me that. And then it just started carrying over. That's incredible. Now bring me into the mind of a club promoter, a successful club promoter. What, what, what are the basics that have to happen to be successful in that, in that business? Well, it's different. Like it changed a lot. Like, you know, I started as a promoter and the difference, the connotation of the word promoter now is a lot different than then. Yep. Sure. So, um, back when I started, you know, we, we would bring anywhere from, you know, 200 to a thousand people or one or two guys, you know, me and a partner, we didn't really need a lot of, you know, sub promoters as they call it today. Now promoters more, especially in New York, more confined to their table. So before, let's say it would, we'd bring a country, they would bring in little Greek islands right now of uh, little things. So it's different, you know, different times, different days. When I had to start back then, you know, I would used to, you know, me and you, if we see a, a good looking girl on Instagram or somebody we want influence, we could just hit them up and DM them yep. and buy yep. them. It's a lot easier access. Then, you know, I want to be known as more as like, you know, really building those relationships. So I used to literally go to every different clothing store, everything, and just track down that number. Cause you don't know if you'll ever see that person again. You know, if I saw a girl on uh, walking in uh, West Broadway, I would chase her down, get a phone number and put her on my call list, you know? And at the time I had, you know, girls at FIT making calls. I, if, if I didn't have enough, I actually had my mom go by an alias and she used to make calls for me as well. <laughs> get out of here. Yeah, I'm not even kidding you. I think our, our name was Sabrina. I got to ask her again. I think it was. Sabrina. Oh my gosh. No way. <laughs> it was, but that's, you know, that's what it was a lot more grunt work and it was a lot more interpersonal. Like you had to really build relationships. You know, I remember when I, when I first started, I would call people in different um, ecosystems, you know, from fashion, music, everything, and invite them down. And they would invite, it would be like little bubbles. They would invite 10 other people and this person invite 10 other people. And that's how hundreds of people would come out. But now it's just, you know, it's totally different game. You know, yep. you, 
you got to rely on like more of like a big team. It's a bigger production and uh, it's a lot more, uh, you know, a, a lot more communication needed because there's so many pieces. What if I told you that I could help you generate more revenue and save money while taking back control of your TV? You guys know how much we love storytelling, how much we love content. Our newest sponsor, atmosphere.tv slash BBQ. Go visit them, check them out because we have the answer to your TV issues. Keep guests entertained with Atmosphere TV because you have the ability to turn your promotions and your advertisements onto your television with this platform. The simple plug and play device lets you take control of the content on your screens. Keep guests entertained, engaged, and informed of real-time specials, career opportunities, and announcements that you can personalize within your own custom content dashboard. Tap into great channels such as America's Funniest Home Videos, Fashion, Throttle, Chive TV, Sports Highlights, Red Bull, Real Madrid, along with unbiased news and entertainment. There is something for everyone. Over 60 curated channels of short form, entertaining content to choose from right at your fingertips. They also have an incredible ad supported network that allows you to not only market within your four walls, but also locally or nationally if you desire. The platform gives you full control to dial in your marketing efforts. Incredible platform, incredible partner. We couldn't be more excited. Please go and visit atmosphere.tv slash BBQ and let them know restaurant influencers sent you. Well, I think when you get down to the heart of it, humans want to be wanted yes and they want to be invited and it's what you access. it's all about access and once what you learned in the early stages of your career you know in nightclubs as a promoter and then now moving on into the restaurant side so much of it is giving people what we call what we're in we're in the hospitality business it's kindness to strangers and the more that people feel comfortable the more they feel invited the more that they feel like this magical experience can happen at richie's restaurant at richie's club then they want that and not only do they want that but then they in effect become a promoter for you right that's really the the power of influence and the power of the internet and where we are as business owners is that if we nail it if we do and we deliver on our promise and we go above and beyond and someone goes, holy shit, like this was an incredible experience. When Apple makes an incredible iPhone and you unbox it and you're like, holy shit, like they care about the box. They care about the packaging. Like they didn't give me some bullshit manual that explains how to, no, how do you, no one got a manual on how to, how to use your iPhone. It just fucking works. It's I don't call thing. anybody. Yeah. It's same thing like Tiffany's. You get a ring. Yeah, it's ring from another ring. It's you're paying double the price just because you Correct. get the box from Tiffany's. It's really Correct. what it comes down to. It's all about you know the branding, <laughs> the packaging. You know? Comes coming back down to the branding. It there is, we go. But, you know, when I started, it was a lot different too because you got to look at it. People really had to go out if you wanted to hear a new track. The track was broke right in a New York nightclub. And you got to look at, there wasn't all these other markets. It wasn't Vegas at the time. There wasn't really Miami was started a year, a few years after there wasn't these secondary markets. It was about New York. New York was yep. a big stage. And if you went out and you wanted to hear a new song, you couldn't go on today and go to Spotify, Beatport, or wherever you want to go, hear a song. You had to actually go to the club and hear broken music, broken in right then and there. Yep. Same thing in fashion. If I saw, I'm like, yeah, Sean, I love that. You know, where did that shirt? Where did you get it, et cetera? And you would tell me, hey, I went to this place. Wes 8th got it here. You know, yep. now you can go online and be like, oh, what should I wear for Coachella? You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's a different, totally different world. You know, back then it was like you really had to earn those relationships. And, and it was a lot more social. You know, we didn't have that ADD mind. Even TV is like, you know, back then, how many stations did we have? Uh, six, seven stations. Now you have Friggin' 5,000 channels and everything and so many everything different streaming. It's all fragmented. Yeah. yeah. It's all fragmented for sure. But I think, you know, when you get down to the heart of it, when you get down to the things that are working and the things that are successful, those principles back from before, those are winning now. Oh, and they're actually even more amplified because of all the things that we're talking about, because of the phone, because of the content, because of social media. I mean, the fact that people can come to your restaurants that used to come to your restaurants, but when Kevin Hart came or Jerry Seinfeld came, like there was no evidence of that. That was just you telling, hey, dude, fucking Jerry Seinfeld came to our pizza shop. But yeah. now, like it literally can go on Instagram to millions, tens of millions of followers. Yep. Yeah. 
definitely true. And plus, you know, it's one of those things, like, especially now, because of COVID, like, we usually have, well, the club part is different. Eh, and hospitality in general, usually every three years, 80% of the crowd changes that goes out. Yeah. You know, people move, they get married, they change their lifestyles, et cetera. With COVID, it, it literally expirated so quickly where it's a whole new crowd, especially in New York. It's, it's most of New York has moved out. Um, it's a, a really, it went from 80% to like 95% in a year. And it's more relationship building more than ever now. And, you know, I went, you know, in myself, like I'm, I'm nine to 9am 9 to 3am pretty much every single day. Yep. Just making relationships, keeping it up. That's, you know, but that's one of the reasons I love it. It's, it's my high. Like I don't, I don't drink, I don't do drugs. My whole thing is just, I love creating and I love creating with other people. I love building relationships and it's, it's why I do it. It's, it's my biggest reason why I do it. It's money secondary. What does collaboration mean to you? It's relationships. Everything comes down to, if I have a basic formula or everything, it's collaborations. You can't have collaborate if you don't build a relationship. Everything comes down to the basics. You need the relationship. And most of the time it's like you leverage the situation. If you have something good, you create the leverage by building something, an idea and a vision. You take the relationship and build the collaboration with it. And then others want to join there by because you're giving them the access that they desire. And that's pretty much what, uh, what the models are. You know, when I do a project, I look at it more like a movie producer. Uh, people sometimes joke when I say that it's, you know, you want to know what, what the, what thing is. So you look first, it's what the vision is. What's your identity. You know, if you go to a movie, it's, you know, a drama, let's say, or an action movie, you got to know what is your vision identity first. And then after that, it's who the actors involved, who the characters involved, you know, it could be if it's a restaurant, who's the chef, you know, who's the maitre d', who's the CEO, who's a, even if the thing, who are the waiters, waitresses, it goes down from the, the, the main actors to co-stars to extras to sub roles. It's just this, that's the next. And then the third target is who's your audience is watching this. Like if you looked and you wanted to watch a comedy, you see a drama come on, it's like, you see the trailer, you're not going to go. It's not something you desire. So I always look at things like I look at, I love movies and I look at everything I do as this project is creating a new movie and a new identity, a new experience. Which was the first restaurant that you called your own? Oh, uh, it's a good question, actually. <laughs> I guess restaurant, restaurant. The diner, yeah. I had to be the diner. The so, diner. Uh, yeah, I own, I opened that in 2003 uh, with um, my partners Sergio Riva and Mark Packer. Actually, um, it was in the meat packing on the corner on 14th Street, and 9th Avenue. This is before Apple was even there because everyone usually they'll define it as oh, across from Apple. Um, we had a game and it was a, a diner before that. It was broken down. It was like meth met people doing meth outside. You know the meat packing. This was before. Me packing didn't really make that swing yet. And it was still, you know, meat was being hung up there, blood coming from it. And we opened that in 2003 and uh, we worked it for 15 years. You know, we closed uh, 2018, the lease was up and now they're redeveloping the building. But that would be the first thing that was, if somebody ever wanted to kill me, they knew where to find me. I was either in the corner booth <laughs> inside or I was outside. I was, I was at the corner table outside. So that was pretty much my, uh, my social club, as we would call it, you know? Yeah. And when did you open up other restaurants, obviously after that, or were you opening up restaurants yeah. during that time? Uh, I went there. Um, after that, I went more consulting with it. And then in uh, 2015, we opened up um, Yulon Kitchen. It was pretty much a 360 for me. Um, you know, I started my, my whole everything from what, you know, my career and everything in terms of at limelight as a kid. Um, and I went 360 and I opened up Yulon kitchen, which is pretty much it's in the limelight. It's in 30% of the limelight. And we opened up as a Chinese restaurant. So that was in 2015 with me, uh, my co-founders on it was uh, Stratus and Robert on that one. So uh, it's funny you bring up Stratus. I, uh, I, I was doing, doing my research, looking and saying that you had partnered with Stratus back in 2003. 
So yeah. I gave him a call and I let him know uh, I was interviewing Richie on the show. Stratus was a previous guest. I interviewed him when we were at a mirror tech conference in Vegas for this show um, before he published his book, uh, Be a Disruptor, but Brooklyn Dumpling Shop and um, somebody that has done obviously incredible things in the hospitality space, not just in New York, but now all over. Um, but I asked him about, I said, so tell me about Richie. And he goes, you know, it, it's, it's almost the rarest thing on earth to have somebody that's a promoter that started as a promoter become successful as a restaurateur, but more importantly, somebody that I still keep in touch with. Yeah. It's like I still keep in touch with because of his integrity, his honesty and his relentlessness and his, and his dedication to hospitality. He said, it's the highest compliment that I, that I can give because it's, there's always a disconnect with promoters, restaurant owners, club owners, where the relationship ends and it never ends well. Why are you able to maintain the relationships that you've built over the years? Honestly, it's more because it's a vision and creative process first for me. Like, like I, I always say, like money's secondary. It's, you know, if you're going to get married yourself and you're going to propose to someone, you know, it's a marriage. You, you're going into a marriage and I take relationships more important than anything for me. It's, it's more important than money. It's, you know, a lot of people, you know, in today's thing with tech, it's all about data. For me, it's all about relationships. And, um, you know, I don't have an ego. I know what I'm, I stay in my, my lane. I have a vision. I like creating those visions with other people and we make it happen. And that's, that's pretty much the goal. And, you know, my one thing I always say, it's like, everyone has to have their, their department and stay in their lane because you have a lot of people that want to do six or seven tasks when they haven't mastered that one and like focus on the one. It's like even playing, if you were back in a kid and you're playing a video game, you don't go from level one to 20. Yep. You know, succeed in that one and build it up and then start taking more responsibilities. A lot of people want the response, but they want the power. They want the responsibility. Like I never looked at it as power as responsibility. I look at it as creating and I'm a big sports guy. So I looked at it as creating together and winning. This is our world series. This is our super bowl. This is our Stanley cup. Yep. And that's what it is. Cause I'm not a professional athlete. So I do something new showing it. So we create and we build this team. It's a team. We got to remember it's a team we're building. That's what it comes down to the strategy is so important. And even with the movie, when I said it, it's like we're creating this identity and this vision. We literally are creating this team, this, these cast of actors and characters. And then we're identifying and going to that audience. And it's, you know, that's us winning together. So yes. that, that's what it's really about. It's just, you know, you know, us afterwards be like, wow, we did this. This was amazing. And yeah. that's the biggest proponent why I do it. I think that's, that's, very well put. It's something that we we talk a lot about and something that our mantras, everything is our Super Bowl. Every project is our Super Bowl. Yeah. And if we give our best and our entire team, then we can start building a dynasty because the Super Bowl is the proof of the beginning. I don't want just one Super Bowl. I don't want one transaction. I want a lifetime of dynasty where people look back and they go, every project that we did together, we knocked it out of the park. Does it mean they were all successful? Absolutely not. Because no perfect seasons are going to happen. Oh. But we're going to learn from it. We're going to win. And we're going to just build legacy on top of legacy. And that's my thing is that's why it's like, it's not about creating one big fund and I want to sell it. I just love creating. And I love, yeah. uh, I love when I meet people and we just, we have the same, we, we have a similar vision and just keep creating. That's why I do so many different things. It's just, I love creating with people. It's literally what, what I live for. Talk to me about the influencer economy. So we've gone, you're somebody that has spent so much time with the celebrity economy, traditional celebrity before, you know, the smartphone age, the social media age, where you're dealing with high level, high net worth, high profile people. But now we also have another culture of influencer celebrity, people that are huge YouTubers, huge Instagrammers, huge TikTokers. Talk to me about where we are in this new creator economy. Uh, I'm a little different with it. I'm not. Now and then on certain things, I see it, I get it. I'm not a huge influencer guy, especially with the nightclub part, because you don't know who's following them and it's yep. different and it's an access thing, especially like, you know, like Nebula, for instance, you know, my nightclub and everything, you know, it's a bottle service club. It's, it's, you know, we do have a dance floor, but it's, it's specifically target. Like, you know, on weekends we have Fridays, like tech house, deep house, Saturdays, you know, more like commercial EDM where on a Friday, I, I wouldn't ever use an influencer because I don't know the audience they're going to bring. 
yeah. and like I said, it's an access play. I don't know if it's a bunch of 12, 13 year olds following. I don't know who's following them. So I'm yeah. not, I was never big on the influencer thing. That's just me. Sometimes it's great with pizza. I think it, you know, it is something where, Hey, you know, that's of all ages. I just think influences have to you be used strategically. You know, if you're using it at an old age thing, I get it. But if you're looking at something where you want it a little more exclusive and it's more of an access play, um, I don't see the, um, the full value in that. You know, I think that has to be curbed a little bit. And now a quick break from restaurant influencers to welcome our newest sponsor to the show. And that is Davo Sales Tax. Davo is an incredible company. I remember when we first opened up our restaurant in 2008, Cali Barbecue, we were struggling to figure out how to automate sales tax, how to have enough money in our account to file our quarterly taxes. I am so grateful that now today we have found Davo and they are a sponsor of the show and they are excited to help other business owners no longer have to become tax collectors. Davo does it all for you. They take care of the compliance. They take care of the collecting. They take care of the filing. Get your first month free by going to davosalestax.com slash influencers. Let them know that we sent you. Davo is an incredible company. We're grateful to have them on the show. They integrate with all the top POS companies, including Toast. davosalestax.com slash influencers. Automate your sales tax today and get back to running your business. How do you design for access? How do you design to make it appealing for people to want to go in, to have that FOMO, but then also create opportunity within those, as you said, democratized access points, you know, this resort style, casino style in a micro environment? I think it comes down again, back to the movie thing where it's what you're creating the identity, who's involved, and then what your audience is. Like, you know, I always believe in programming. Um, that's the biggest thing I learned from being in uh, nightlife is um, the programming aspect. You know, you have the DJs, you have different performances, you have to come up with, have to come up with really creative ideas. And that's why with Zaz, that was the biggest thing is where, I'll be honest with you, um, you obviously everyone knows Danny Myers. Um, I've read Setting the Table probably, I don't know, 20 times, you know, Audible books, everything. And the guy's a legend. So about a James Beard award winner and, and fine dining. And then he goes and opens up Shake Shack, uh, which has started pretty much the QSR revolution and everything. And, you know, 90% of his money even came from there. And I looked at three components and that I felt like, you know, myself and my, you know, my partner and my partners that I work with, um, we could do better. And one of those big aspects was programming. You know, you don't see a Shake Shack or even a Sweet Greens or anything doing programming. They don't do art parties. They don't do sneaker jobs. You know, we had one event with Back Market where, you know, it was Earth Day and we uh, collected over 4,000 pounds of electronics for, di uh, for slices. So we called it Slices for Devices. We did a big marketing wow. play. Gave it in like, you just don't see um, other places do that and the yeah, QSR yeah. element. So I just feel like you create the programming and you get people experience because people are quantifying their money a lot more now, you know, yeah. it, you know, especially after 2008 too, when you had the crash, it's, you know, before we would get, we wouldn't look at our cable bill. We wouldn't look at bills. And now it's like, if we're going to go somewhere. We want that experience and we'll pay more for the experience, but we want to quantify that experience. What are we exactly getting? Let's say for that $225 or that $800 or that $1,500, what are we getting for that experience? So I just think, you know, the program and the experience thing is a big part of it. You know, that's huge. I think, you know, when I look at our, my hospitality career, you know, opening up five restaurants here in San Diego, but the, the event side of the programming, literally because we we're in such a bad location, I had to figure out how do I host an event? Is it a charity event? Is it a sports event? Is it fight night? Whatever it is. I, we did, we turned our restaurant into a club. I mean, we did as many ridiculous things as possible to drive people there, but were they all successful? Absolutely not. But what it taught us was the muscle the muscle and the creativity to go, we're willing to try it, we're willing to fail. And by doing that, we got people to buy in. We got people mm -hmm. to buy in on the short term, but more importantly, to buy into the branding on the long term. And they've come with us for a journey. Exactly. Building the brand is the hardest thing to do. It's the biggest. Yeah. I remember the first time when I did, when we opened up Zazie's, when we first opened up, we weren't allowed to bring people inside because of COVID. It was oh, yes, yes. And I remember the first time I was able to do a party, 
(laughs) like just like the permission to go back to the to the mcdonald's playground (laughs) exactly i'm not even kidding you sean i I remember like this is guy michael who's a big art guy comes to the event i have four or five hundred people it's a it turned from a pizza party to a block party yes we have a dj outside the whole thing and i remember my friend he's like he goes you turned this is studio 54 out here this is crazy yes. I have four or five hundred people in a 600 and sorry 800 square foot pizzeria outside the whole block just became a party and people I had a great it. time and that's the experience why to do it you know that's... even with even with even with the pizza element for me like i remember like you probably saw the mcdonald's movie you know when they brought of course you know, mcdonald's went to other countries it was so huge they brought yes. the hamburger to other countries as fast food burger and it's like i'm doing that with pizza right now like we went to Cartagena, Colombia. We just opened up three, four months ago. Oh, We're wow. opening up Bali, Indonesia, end of the year. This is changing a country. And like yep. that's why I get goosebumps doing it. That's like the that's the World Series. That's the World Cup. It's, you know, wow, they're having the slice, the New York slice, a slice that's in awesome. Cartagena. Cause they don't have it. You go, you travel, you never see yeah. the slice. It's always those little corny little personal eyes that, you know, you'd rather have Elio's pizza, you know? And no knock on Ellie. <laughs> so I, you, you know what I mean? It's yep. that's why I, that's pretty much another being reason I do it. I just love having an imprint on things, you know? I mean, that's the coolest thing that we see, you know, with this show, we're able to reach millions of people, which, you know, when we first started podcasting as a barbecue company, you know, five years ago, people were laughing at me, telling me, you don't know what you're doing. And now we're here with entrepreneur. I get to talk to Richie about you opening up, you know, your, your pizza shops all over the globe. I mean, this is the shit that we know is where the world is going. And it's exciting because the best people, the people that are playing the game within the game can share ideas. You know, we can share ideas, we can get shit done. And, you know, if it connects, you can build relationships and those relationships lead to opportunities all over the place. Um, There is something, absolutely. There is something I wanted to ask you about on a personal side. Uh, We talk about there that I don't live, I don't live two lives. I don't have a business life and a personal life. Like I live one life. So as a, as a business owner, as a content creator, people, we talk about, um, you know, using smartphone storytelling to get your story out. If anyone goes to my Instagram or my TikTok, they see content about our barbecue business, building the Amazon of barbecue. They see content about the podcast. They see content about me going to chargers games with them losing, but me bringing, bringing my family. You see my kids, you see my wife, a lot of business owners are scared to put themselves out there. Why we do this show is to teach business owners that to put your frequency out there, putting your frequency out there. It's not just the brand, but it's the human behind the brand. And yeah. you are a restaurateur. You are somebody that is so well known in New York City that page six is posting when you get engaged. Yeah. You put on your Instagram, he goes, it's not official until it's on IG until, right. and it's on page six. Can you tell me about, about that, that post and why you choose to share some things that a lot of business owners hold dear close to their heart? You know, you gotta have that mixed balance because like you said, it's always about relationships. And if someone doesn't really get to know you as a person and they have this judge a book by its cover and you just see on Instagram that it's, you know, me with celebrity is or me doing this or me traveling the world. And you know what I mean? You get that, you know, other people look at that as that, you know, there might be a hatred towards it, like, Oh, yep. they don't know this guy's whatever. You know what I mean? Oh, uh, so, you know, I, I think sometimes you got to have, if they haven't met me, most people pretty much, I'm a humble guy. Um, you know, I'm not anything extravagant. I'm like, I'm easy to talk to. I actually genuinely love people. And I like, you know, I think sometimes you got to show the side. I don't usually show my full side of it. And also um, the love of my fiance, it's, you know, it shows her and everything that I put her out there like that. Cause she yeah. knows not, you know, I show, I show a little, but not too much. Like, you know, yeah. you don't see my whole personal life, you know, I don't share everything, but for her, you know, showing that she means so much to me and she's also part of it because she supports me. Like, you know, I'm out 9 a.m. to 3 a.m. Yeah. So, you know, every day and, you know, sometimes even later, something, and, she she deals with it so i wanted to show that hey she's an important part of my life and she is in this and she's got my back because there's always that person behind the scenes for you you know what i mean and she's you know she's the woman that's got my back so i wanted to uh, you know show my other side but also show her how much i love her and appreciate her well i want to thank you for your courage as a man and as a leader and as a business owner for doing that because uh 
it doesn't go unnoticed by someone like me who I put my wife out there because I can't do what I do, um, build what we're trying to build here in San Diego and all over the world if it wasn't for her um, and her love and her support. So thank you for doing that. Um, Every single Wednesday and Friday on the social audio app Clubhouse, um, we host a room, digital hospitality room um, at 10 a.m. Pacific time, 1 p.m. Eastern time. And we have people that listen to this show, restaurant influencers. They support the show. They come onto the app. They come on stage. They talk about where they are in the hospitality business media business and we give a shout out so this week's shout out goes to jason berkowitz Uh, jason berkowitz is one of the uh, top hospitality leaders that not only supports this show but he comes to those clubhouse rooms it's arrow up training Um, he's doing some incredible work so jason it's a huge shout out to you but richie i wanted to give you an opportunity uh as business owners where you typically don't get to shout out people on our team uh, is there anybody that works behind the scenes with you um, on any of your concepts that have gone above and beyond that they can go, oh, that's pretty cool. I got shouted out on entrepreneur. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, I have a lot of people. Out to say, I'm sure. Uh, I'm uh, sure. But I'm putting you I'm putting you on the spot. No, I want like you to I said, it's, it's all about relationships. <laughs> I got, you know, my partner, John, who I have a uh, Zazie's with and uh, Innocent Yesterday. We're coming soon. Food group, John Gable. Um, he's a brilliant guy. You know, he's he's that CEO guy that literally runs the whole back of the house and operation. And, you know, I handle brand and it's like, it's a great partnership. I have my partner Yang from uh, Nebula and we have other stuff coming. He's an amazing visionary and, um, you know, all of it, which is good yin to yangs with all of us, you know, no pun intended. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I got uh, my right hand and my partner, uh, Jonas, who helps me out with a lot. Uh, partner, uh, Mike, Michael Wright, who's a great guy, who's, you know, probably one of the only guys that, you know, everyone thinks they could do both sides, the marketing and the back at house and operations. He's that guy that actually can do both sides because wow. I take pride in being able to be a great brander and strategist. But, you know, back at house, it's not something I like to do or I'm even good at. And he's that guy that can balance both. And um, I have my other new partners that we just made, um, you know, joined as a partner and I'm their chief uh, hospitality officer at um, the Simple Venue Sushi by Boo team. Uh, Mike Sininski and Erica London. I want to thank them too. Uh, it's been, you know, a great experience working with them and creating it. We just opened up a new uh, sushi speakeasy, sushi by Boo awesome. on uh, in Chelsea. Cool. You walk through a, a florist shop slash coffee shop, and you enter into a 1920s theme amakasi place, and we play all nice. 20s uh, jazz, and it's phenomenal. We actually officially open up next friday october 7th but uh we got such demand we booked out the whole month of october already we actually now just started opening just because the demand is uh, yeah i love working with them too and you know it's just i could be here forever just thanking people <laughs> to be honest so with tell me i won't i let's let's pretend that in five years i'm going to be in new york and we're going to do this interview again but i want you to think big what's going to happen in the next five years what are you going to create so when you when you listen to this and we look back and be like, dude, you thought way too small. I want you to think big. Give me some big five years. Audacious. Honestly, I, like everything's big of how everyone looks at it. Like I'm a strange guy. Like some people are like, yo, I want to, you know, I want to build all these things and sell my company for that. Like I'm I'm such a like people say it. I'm such a relationship guy and creator and visionary where. I just want to keep creating this. Yeah, just keep giving. I just want to keep playing the game. I just, just want, want to create in. things where people don't even know. Like you know, it, it could be anything. I, I don't care if it's cotton candy or uh, you know an app. Like you know, I, I'm actually just launching a, a NFT uh, private plane access utility. Nice. And with my partner Hassan called MetaFly Club. Like it's just we. There's just so many avenues to go down, and it's. I just want to keep creating. You know, me and you, five years we. After this thing, we might create something. You know That's I mean? right. You know, I, you, I mean, th- that is the, the coolest thing about this show is it connects me to people that are, I mean, literally uh, the fact that I get to spend time with you and learn about what you're doing and what you've done in the past and what you plan to do in the future. If you're ever on the West Coast in San Diego, and that goes for anybody yeah. that's listening to this show. I mean, truly, we know that there's a vibration, there's an energy. If you're here, if you've stayed yeah. the whole time, come to San Diego, check out the Amazon barbecue, go to New York find Richie, see, go visit one of his projects, learn from what he's doing. Um, dude, I can't tell you how, how much I appreciate your time and you know what you're doing for the hospitality industry, seriously. Yeah, especially, the, listen, this is what we do. It's all about yep. building relationships. And be honestly, 
I had um, a quick little short story. Sorry to take up more time on it. Oh, no, you go. You know, COVID was a big uh, eye awakening experience for myself where, you know, when it happened, everything got shut down in New York and 90% of my friends moved to Florida. And I'm like, yo, what do I do? Do I restart over and go to Florida and do it? Or do I fight for my city? You know, I'm a born and raised New Yorker. And that's honestly another proponent I do it. It's just, I, I want to make New York be really the city that never sleeps again. Yeah, that's that's a whole other, you know, self agenda, I would say, where that's the only part doesn't really have to do with the relationships. It's about I literally I love my city and I want to see New York thrive again. You know, I love it. Well, not only New York thriving, but bringing tastes of New York all over the world, oh, too. Man. That's that, yeah. that's amazing. Very cool. Well, if you guys want to connect with me, it's at Sean P. Walchef, S-H-A-W-N-P-W-A-L-C-H-E-F. And that's on TikTok, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, all the spots. Um, if you want to connect with Richie, it's at Richie Romero one on Instagram. Richie, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for your leadership. Um, can't wait to see what you build next. And uh, you got a, you got a huge fan out here on the West Coast and us. So what, whatever you need from us, let us know. Thanks, Sean, man. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. Appreciate you. Thank you, guys. Please uh, subscribe to the show, share it with a friend, and uh, join us on Clubhouse every Wednesday and Friday, 10 a.m. Pacific time, 1 p.m. Eastern time. We will catch you next week. Thank you. And a special thank you to our title sponsor, Toast. Toast is the primary technology partner that we use at our restaurant, Cali Barbecue. It is also the primary technology partner that so many of the guests have shared with us on this show. People like Sam, the cooking guy, Stacy Poon Kinney, Jeff Alexander. So many times the guests tell us that they're using Toast when we didn't even know that going into the interview. That is why we are so grateful that they sponsor this show. We want you to win. You that listen to this show, we want you to improve your digital hospitality. Toast is built for restaurants and it's built for you. Toast is the restaurant first platform that's built for your needs, whatever your size, concept, or ambitions. Improve your bottom line with a customizable platform that's easy to learn, use, and grow with. And it meets you where you are with all the right tools for your price point. If you have any questions about Toast, please DM me at Sean P. Walchef, S-H-A-W-N-P-W-A-L-C-H-E-F. I will get you the link to the right Toast contact in your market. It's so important that if you listen to this show, that you win. We want you to be on this show eventually. Let us know that you heard the show, you heard about Toast, you implemented Toast, you did a Toast unboxing in your restaurant. Talk to us about how you've impacted your village, your city, your community. Share your Toast story with us. DM me today to learn more. And be sure to check out Toast.